Theology. So finally, let's look at now applications. Applications or uses of anaerobic respiration. So this anaerobic respiration is used in bread baking industry whereby yeast is used to ferment the duff. So remember, the other name of anaerobic respiration is said that it is also called fermentation reaction. So it is used in the bakery industry whereby yeast is used to ferment duff and make it hard in order to prepare the different breads, the different cakes. So apart from that, we see that the other function of anaerobic respiration, it is used in the production of vinegar. So as we know vinegar, it is used in fast foods to remove excess fats in maybe chips or ETC. So it is used to remove excess fats. So the other function here is that it is used in the production of vinegar. Apart from that, the other function of anaerobic respiration, it is used in the production of power alcohol used as petrol substitute for motor vehicles. That's the other function. So in order to produce the power alcohol from fermentation reaction, in order to produce petrol, uh, in order to produce power alcohol to be used as substitute for petrol. Apart from that, uh, it is also used in the production of oxalic acid or ethan dioic acid as well as production of um, the different drugs, e.g. penicillin drugs uh, to manufacture the different drugs like example penicillin. Also we see that in anaerobic respiration it can also be used in the manufacture of yogurt, uh, manufacture of cheese, manufacture of cream, manufacture of butter, the blue band etc. So apart from that, anaerobic respiration is used in the production of ethanoic acid from the breakdown of ethanol. So this we are going to learn it in organic chemistry, organic 2, whereby the ethanoic acid will be broken down to ethanol. So that is anaerobic respiration. It can also be used in this process. Apart from that, you can see that anaerobic respiration can also be used in the production of compost, manure, and silage for agriculture and for the different livestock that we have. Apart from that, lastly, we can say that uh, anaerobic respiration is also used in the production of different fermented beverages, like, for example, we have alcohol, we have the different beers around. So those are now the uses of anaerobic respiration. But now, since we have gone through aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration, so let's look at now the differences between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration so what are the differences between these two types of respiration so we're going to look at these two columns for aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration so the first difference that we identified when we are beginning the analysis of the two we say that in aerobic respiration oxygen must be present so aerobic uses oxygen anaerobic respiration does not use oxygen so for the aerobic respiration, we say that there is complete breakdown of food substrate, whereby the food substrate is completely broken down by the use of oxygen to form, uh, to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So that is what is, uh, if we break down, if we completely break down the food substrate in aerobic respiration, we get carbon dioxide, water, and energy. While in anaerobic respiration, there is incomplete breakdown of food substrate, whereby in plants we get ethanol, and in animals we are going to get lactic acid. So in aerobic respiration, we see that more energy is released. 38 ATP, more energy is released in aerobic respiration, while in anaerobic respiration, very low energy is released. So the energy in anaerobic respiration is about 2 ATP, uh, molecules only that is released. So for that, we can look at another difference. In aerobic respiration, we can say that one molecule of glucose, one molecule of glucose produces 38 ATP energy. That is aerobic. While for anaerobic respiration, one molecule of glucose only produces two ATP molecules of energy. That is very low energy. So apart from that, in aerobic respiration, we say that we can say that it has two phases. So Yes, in aerobic respiration, it has two phases, whereby the first phase is glycolysis, the second phase is the Krebs cycle. So that is aerobic respiration, while anaerobic respiration doesn't have phases. So it is a monophase phase. So apart from that, you can look at now the different, uh, the, what, the location. 
In aerobic respiration, it mainly takes place in, in the cytoplasm and in the matrix of the mitochondrion. So it takes place in those two, uh, in those two phases, cytoplasm and the matrix of the mitochondrion, while in anaerobic respiration, it only takes place in the cytoplasm only. It doesn't take place in the mitochondrion. So it only takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell only. So, apart from that, let's now look at respiratory quotient. So, what is respiratory quotient? So, as you can look at this diagram, this diagram summarizes respiratory quotient. So, how do we define respiratory quotient? So, respiratory quotient, this is the ratio showing the amount of carbon dioxide produced against the oxygen consumed. That is respiratory quotient. You can see this equation, RQ is equals to CO2 over O2. If I've been asked to define respiratory quotient, the only thing you need to say, the only thing you need to mention, just talk about this formula, that formula. So respiratory quotient, it means that this is the ratio uh, which compares the carbon dioxide produced over the oxygen consumed. So this diagram summarizes everything in respiratory quotient. So in short, respiratory quotient of carbohydrates is equal to 1. So if you make your calculation, you get your answer to be 1 that represents carbohydrates. So why is it that respiratory quotient of carbohydrate is 1? So the respiratory quotient of carbohydrate is always 1 because carbohydrates are completely broken down in respiration. They are completely broken down to give, uh, to give energy. So that's why the respiratory quotient of carbohydrates is always equal to 1. Why? Because carbohydrates are always completely broken down uh, during the process of respiration. So the carbon dioxide produces in carbohydrate balances with the oxygen used. So this implies that aerobic respiration is taking place. That is for the carbohydrates. So the respiratory quotient is always equal to 1. So the respiratory quotient of fats is always equal to 0 0.7, while the respiratory quotient for protein is always equal to 0 0.9. That is the RQ for the proteins. It's always equal to 0 0.9, fat 0 0.7, carbohydrate is 0 0.1. So the respiratory quotient of fat and protein indicate that the carbon dioxide produced is less than the oxygen which is used up. That's why the respiratory quotient are always are less than 1. So they are always less than one because it indicates that the carbon dioxide which is being produced in the case of now the, the product, the carbon dioxide being produced is less than the oxygen being consumed. Or we can say that the oxygen being uh, consumed or used up is more than the carbon dioxide which is being produced. Therefore, that's why the respiratory quotient are 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. So as well, you can say that the respiratory quotient of values above 1 indicate an aerobic respiration. That is values above 1 indicate an aerobic respiration. So this is because in this type of respiration, uh, no oxygen is basically used up. So if the respiratory quotient is more than 1, it indicates an aerobic respiration. Why? This indicates that no oxygen is being used up for the process of respiration. Therefore, it will mean that the carbon dioxide is the only gas which is being used for this type of respiration. Therefore, the respiratory quotient in this case will be infinity. It will go up to a billion. So the respiratory quotient value will go up to infinity. Why? It's because it is only one gas which is being involved here. There is no comparison between two gases. It is only one gas. And for this case, we cannot calculate the respiratory quotient. There, uh, therefore, that's why we say that the formula for respiratory quotient must involve two gases, that is oxygen gas and carbon four oxide gas. So let's look at now the different questions which involve respiratory quotient. So the question reads: Calculate the respiratory quotient of the following uh, of the following equations or the following samples. So remember, the formula for respiratory quotient is equals to Volume of the carbon dioxide produced over the volume of oxygen consumed. That is how, or that is the formula for respiratory quotient. So let's give ourselves an example. Uh, the oxygen consumed in this case was 15, while the carbon dioxide produced in this case was 15. So let's apply everything in the formula. 
So you can say 15 for carbon dioxide produced divided by 15 for oxygen consumed. Uh, for oxygen consumed. So if we calculate, we are going to get 1.0. So this 1.0 will indicate that it is carbohydrates which was being oxidized or the respiration involved carbohydrates. So RQ is equals to 1.0. That is for carbohydrates. So apart from that, let's look at the other question. So the other question now involves an equation. And it reads, the equation below represents oxidation of food substrate. As you can see, so the equation below represents oxidation of a certain food substrate. So we have that one hydrocarbon, which uh, is C18, uh, reacting with 26 molecules of oxygen, 18 molecules of carbon dioxide, and 18 molecules of water to be obtained. So calculate the respiratory quotient. If you have been given such an equation, how do you calculate respiratory quotient? It is very simple. Check the value before carbon dioxide, use that one. Check the value before oxygen, use that one. So in this first equation, we have 18 molecules of carbon dioxide as the carbon dioxide produced. And then we have 26 molecules of oxygen as the molecules of oxygen produced. So how do you calculate the respiratory quotient? So we are going to say 18 for carbon dioxide produced divided by 26 for oxygen consumed. So if you calculate this respiratory quotient, you are going to get 0 0.69. That is the RQ. So if we round this off to 1, we are going to get 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 is now the respiratory quotient in that first equation. So the next question is asking, so which food substrate was being oxidized in the following uh, equation? So which food substrate was being oxidized? So here we have 0 0.7. So since we have 0 0.7, this is fat. Because remember we say that fat is 0 0.7. If we calculate our answer, we get 0 0.7. That is fat which was being oxidized. So this C18H36O2 is a fat molecule, which was reacted with oxygen and a respiratory uh, quotient for us to get, it is 0 0.7. So let's now look at the other calculation. So the other calculation is saying, Calculate the respiratory quotient below. So we have uh, C51H98O6 plus 40, 145 molecules of oxygen, then 102 molecules of carbon dioxide. So how do you calculate the respiratory quotient in this case? So the respiratory quotient in this case, we are going to take the value before carbon dioxide is 102. So we're going to say 102 molecules of carbon dioxide produced divided by 145 molecules of oxygen consumed. So if we look at this equation, if we calculate it correctly, we are going to get 0 0.70 uh, as the value. So the answer is 0 0.70 value. So the next question is asking which food substrate was being oxidized. So here, the food substrate which was being oxidized, again, it is fats. Because under respiratory quotient, 0 0.7 implies that fat is being oxidized. So that molecule C51H98O6, that is a fat molecule. That's why after being oxidized, we are going to get respiratory quotient corresponding to 0 0.7. So that implies that it is fat which was being oxidized. So finally, let's look at now the factors affecting respiration. So which, which are these factors which affect respiration? So we have the different factors that affect respiration. So the first factor, we are going to look at oxygen concentration. So there must be oxygen. Oxygen must be made available for respiration to take place in order for us to receive a high amount of energy. So if oxygen is made available, aerobic respiration will take place whereby a lot of energy will be produced. If oxygen is not available, so anaerobic respiration is going to take place whereby very low energy is going to be produced. Therefore, respiration proceeds faster in the presence of oxygen and slower in the absence of oxygen. So that's the first point. So the second point is substrate concentration. Sub food substrates which undergo respiration, we have proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So those are the three food substrates which basically mostly undergoes uh, respiration. So this point is substrate concentration. So you see that the more the substrate, either carbohydrate, fat, or carbo uh, carbohydrates, fats, or Mm, proteins. So the more the food substrate, the higher the rate of respiration. So the higher the rate of respiration is going to take place. 
So if there is no food substrate, very low amount of respiration is going to take place. So that is all about the substrate concentration. So about uh, after that, the next one is surface area to volume ratio. So the surface area to volume ratio. So you can say that the larger the surface area to volume ratio, the higher the rate of respiration. While the lower the rate of the lower the surface area to volume ratio, the lower the rate of respiration under any case. So apart from surface area, we go to the next one is hormones. So for the hormones, we see that some hormones, like for example, the adrenaline hormone increases the respiration rate. So if maybe you are frightened, you feel that kajoto passing. So that kajoto and then gives you energy. That is now the adrenaline hormone. So if this adrenaline hormone will be produced in the body, so it increases the respiration rate. So this hormone is produced mainly during emergency, mainly uh, maybe if you are frightened or if you feel afraid. So this hormone is mainly produced during emergency. And then after being produced, it's, its activity in the body is short-lived. It takes about five seconds only. So five seconds, this energy is this hormone is pumped in order to give you energy so that you get yourself out of the problem. So if you don't get yourself out of the problem, so the hormone is withdrawn, but that's not the point. <laughs> so the point here is that the production of this adrenaline hormone increases the respiration rate. So if this hormone is produced, the rate of respiration is going to be high. So if this hormone is not produced, the rate of respiration is going to be low. So after that, the next one is age, whereby we see that respiration is higher in younger organisms due to high metabolic activities or high metabolic rate through, uh, due to exercise, due to uh, cells being produced, etc. So the energy requirement for younger organisms is always very higher. Therefore, we'll say that respiration in, in younger organisms is very high as compared to older organisms whereby respiration is very low. So apart from that, let's look at temperature as the last one, whereby respiration works best in optimum temperatures. In higher temperatures, uh, higher temperatures are going to destroy these enzymes undertaking respiration. So respiration works best in optimum temperatures, whereby in lower temperatures, these enzymes undertaking respiration, they are going to be, they are going to be made inactive. They are not going to be active. Therefore, respiration is going to be low. Therefore, respiration works best in optimum temperature. The temperature whereby, uh, the temperature uh, whereby it's not too high to destroy the enzymes, it's not too low to inactivate the enzymes. So it works best in optimum temperature whereby the temperature is just normal. Biology.